Ha ha! A very good evening to you. It's me, Scotty McClure. We are, of course, live on Facebook Live. It's Sunday the 23rd of April, 2017, St. George's Day in England. So a very, very happy St. George's Day to all our English friends south of the border. I'm, of course, broadcasting from Scotland. And uh, I say a very good evening to you around the world. Welcome, welcome, welcome as uh, you all join us. That is absolutely tremendous. Now, Scotty McClure is the world's top broadcaster. That's me. You've got me with you for one hour. One hour of superb scintillating information, education and entertainment. We have lots to discuss tonight. And we're going to talk about the United Kingdom and its relationship with Europe. And we're also going to say, should we scrap the Brexit idea? Also, why do we suddenly find ourselves in the path of a snap general election? Anybody got anything on that one? I'd be very, very pleased to know. And do you think me, Scotty McClure, should stand as a member of Parliament? Right. Uh, hello, Scotty, says Julianne Scott. Louis Faber, good evening. Want to word with you, young man? Want to know why you think I wouldn't make a good MP? George Mullins with us. All right, Scotty, says Gordon Wilson. Nivag has joined us. Hi, Scotty. Ian Walker's watching. Jim Clark, Alex Robertson, and Gregor Forbes. Yes. Tremendous stuff. Welcome, 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 everybody I see. Let's know what country you're from. Send us out lots of thumbs up, lots of hearts, lots of love signs. Wonderful stuff. Scotty McClure with you for one hour tonight and so much to talk about. Also, the French are electioneering as we speak, so it might be something in the air coming from Europe. Scott, Sorry, Scotty, I've just missed tonight's topics of conversation, Rudy says. Don't worry, Rudy, I shall recapitulate and then tidy it up afterwards, obviously. If you are to stand, Scotty, would you be independent, the Scotty McClure party? I think I might be, yes. I'm not a great party person. I've never been a member of any particular party, um, you know, or, or what have you. Dinky do, says Eamon Poddy. And uh, Louis says, politics and politics, many blood-sucking insects. That's not you. Hence why I don't think you should be an MP. Thank you for that, Louis. Scotty McClure is not a blood-sucking insect. Very pleased to hear that, of course. Scotty, you need to be ruthless. You need a ruthless streak to be an MP. Can you hack it? Well, I'm not particularly ruthless, as you know. It'd be interesting if Scotland was ruthless, wouldn't it? Uh, now then, uh, Jim Stephen Gibb, hello to you, dinky do, Scotty McClure. Missed you last week, was working, needless to say, I did not need therapy because uh, I missed your song at the end, says George Mullen. Well, let's hope you don't miss the song at the end tonight, George. I might sing the song twice in an evening, so that there's no chance of you ever missing it. So, main subjects for our discussion, we can, of course, discuss anything you want to discuss. Now, you can phone in. The Skype is open as we speak. You can Skype me at scotty.mcclue, and we can have some serious chit-chat. So, if you'd like to do that, do please feel free to do so. He says, looking around, I'm just making sure everything's all right for that. It should be, uh, yes. Yes, it should be. We should be absolutely fine. So, if you wish to Skype me, feel free to do so. There we are. That's the bit, the bit I was looking for. Sorry for disappearing there. I'm back. There you go. You got a nice free break. Right. That's that. So, if you want to come on the program and have a chat with me, you're very, very welcome to do so. Lots and lots of lovely smiley faces in your emoticons. <laughs> your emoticons. Marvellous stuff. Lots of hearts, please. Lots of thumbs up, lots of love, lots of smiley, smiley faces. That's what we like. Put the glasses back on, says Dean of the Dog. Sorry, Dean of the Dog. Um, these glasses are difficult. It's an age thing. Your, your eyes change as you get a little bit older, as you know. And uh, I now can uh, see the camera in front of me, but I can't read the writing without the glasses. Uh, Thank you, Scotty, says Sandy Howden. No problem at all, Sandy. Are you getting your act together? Are you ready for an independent Scotland? Have you said farewell to the old mob that you've been hanging around? Clem Attlee and that lot are there away now. Um, hello, Scotty, says Anne McBride. 
Dinky Do and McBride. There's Lee Buckinshaw with us, Riddy really, Zack. If you are to stand, would it be as an MSP? In which case you've several years to swat up. Too late for council elections or the general election. There was just a thought the other day. I was watching some of these MPs perform. And I thought, you know, with soundy, without sounding like Yossa Hughes from the boys from the black stuff, I thought to myself, you know, I think I could actually make a bit of a fist of that. Uh, you know, because uh, I'm not just an athlete, you know. There's a few strings to the bow. Facebook playing funny tonight, Captain, says George Raffin. Well, it will do, George, but mine is not. Everybody is watching from the off tonight. So it's a phone-in. Get Skyping, Scotty dot McClue. Skype, 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 as quick as you can. SNP a toast this year, Scotty. Remember you heard it first, Scotty. Sandy, you just make it up to suit yourself. That's like telling yourself the tooth fairy will be in tonight. <laughs> and Santa will bring you something when you haven't even sent him a letter up the chimney, Sandy. So there you go. SNP getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And I'm not party political. I mean, I'm just saying that as an out-and-out out fact. Somebody said to me it was almost 72% of Scots now wish to be independent. So there you go, Sandy. So pop that in your old clay pipe and smoke it up, la-la. Uh, now then, Tiger Tim Stevens, says Paul Wright. Yes, a very fine fellow. I find it very annoying when MPs wave their arms about. My partner is called Yossa Hughes, says Julianne Scott. Um, no, I'll tell you what, if you watch, the MPs have been trained. Ruth Davidson is a cracker. She does she does that all the time with the, with the, with the wee hand, just emphasising things all the time, uh, as if she should be quite a good cobbler there, popping the nails into the shoes. Uh, get the nurse for Sandy, says Gary Hill. Absolute studio nurse for Sandy. Studio nurse, stinky do. And uh, what other rubbish you talk? Scotty, everybody's moving over to the Tories. Hope you're not Sandy. <laughs> I would love Sandy even a small sip of what you're actually on. So there you go, because really, to be quite honest, uh, you know, Theresa May was asking the Scots to vote Tory, and asking the Scots to vote Tory is like um, it's like asking turkeys to vote for Christmas. You know, that's that's what it's like there. Um, will you pay for your biscuits and milk if you get to Westminster? Says Ian Walker. Of course, Ian. I always pay my way. In fact, I've got my own cup of tea with me tonight. Mm, all paid for. Oh, that's absolutely gorgeous. That is lush. Milk, says Paul Wright. <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> There's somebody slagging Sandy off. I won't read it out. It's too cruel. Um, how do you get a Scotty McClue badge to help you promote yourself? Well, we've got them here. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a Scotty McClue badge there. Yes, you can do. There we are. It's quite difficult for me to see the screen, guys, when, uh, when all the lights are in my paths. You know, uh, Andrew McDonald says, Sandy, stop smoking. Yes, absolutely. A Tory voting Scotland, disgusting. It will never happen, says Shug McGinty. Yes, they are a bit rare, aren't they? Uh, I do know some Labour voters planning to lend their votes to the Tories. These people are and always have been faux socialists. So there we are, faux neo-socialists. Yes, the champagne socialists, like most of uh, the, the, the Labour Party, champagne socialists. That's why they struggle with Mr. Corbyn, because he is actually the genuine article. He's your man of the moment. Uh, Dave Hems is watching, did it do the bonnet party, says Ian Walker. Yes, free the bonnet. That's what we'll have, the free bonnet party. And uh, I think I probably might get what he did. I always remember um, somebody having a conversation and they let it slip to the papers. Scotty McClure's thinking of becoming an MP. And uh, within seconds, most of the national press were on the phone. Are you, are you serious about this, McClure? I said, whoa, 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 boys. Just steady, steady on. Um, I can't... Can I inbox you to get a badge? Says Lee Buckinshaw. Well, the badges are quite... Few and far between, Lee, but we will be getting some in. Scotty, do you support the Tories? Disgusting, the rape clause. And um, anybody who votes Tory aligns themselves to this vulgar clause. Well, you know, that is a very, very fair point. I can see what you mean by that. Get well, Alec McCafferty. Get well soon. 
says George Raffin. Quite right, George. Very sound advice, I see. Now, if you've just joined us, a very, very warm welcome to the Scotty McClue Show. We're live on Facebook Live, the world's top broadcast platform. We have so much to talk about and so little time to do it in. If you want us to be stowed out the door and step it through with calls, pick up your Skype. Scotty.McClue is uh, my Skype handle. Pop that in, Skype me, and come on and give us the benefit of your wisdom. Because somebody was saying last week, the show's brilliant, Scotty, but it'd be great if we had some calls. I said, we'll arrange that right away. This is our 31st show. It's St George's Day 2017. I wonder if the England should get another patron saint, because I was checking out St George. I don't think he existed. So I think he's a myth. A bit like the Union. Uh, so there we are. Have to say, Scotty, I'm totally against your political persuasions, but your patterns fantastic, says Douglas William Bryce. Douglas William Bryce, I don't really have political persuasions as such. I just know from an economist's point of view, Scotland would be far, far better off out of this dreadful Union and uh, you know, paying for itself, hanging on to the 40 billion quid and feeding the weans in Scotland. Even if we said, you know, if you had a more understanding person in charge of Westminster, you said, look, we'll split it with you, we'll send you 20 billion, but we will keep 20 billion to feed the weans. That would be uh, what you would call the McClue formula. So there you are. Never mind the Barnet formula. Two sugars and milk, says Paul Wright. Um, now, I heard Andy McAteer, what we're going to do with you, Andy, for that is we're going to block you. So we'll never, ever, ever hear from Andy McAteer again. Hey, well, he's completely gone. And uh, serves him right. Uh, so there we are. I heard someone referring to Theresa May as a champagne socialist, says Dave Hemsley. Yes, it does happen. Mark Cruden, good evening, Scotty. Good evening, Mark. Lovely to hear from you, sir. Dinky do to you, I say. Catherine Shaw is watching. Everybody's joined Scotty McClue live now. Uh, we're coming up to a share point. We have about four or five share points during the program. So if you can all share, 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 share. And if you can share everything that comes up in front of you in Facebook, don't do the, the attitude, the funny face. Oh, Scotty McClue, what's he wanting new? You know, none of that, please. Um, if you see Scotty McClue on it, say, big, big talk show host, global, send it round. Not a problem. Callum Slight's watching, a fine fellow. Dinky do, Callum Slight. Uh, Douglas William Bryce, tell us more about this bonnet formula. Yes, absolutely. Well, Scotland, Douglas William Bryce, you'll not know this. You won't know that you've been ripped off for 310 years. But uh, we send £40 billion a year plus down to Westminster so they can squander it. And uh, we're running on the Barnet formula. They give us back our beer money. And uh, what I was saying is... Why don't we split it for starters and say, you have 20, 20 billion this year, we'll keep 20 billion to feed the children and sort out the food banks. So there we are. And um, I think Miss Sturgeon is going to receive a few surprises in the campaign. Hopefully, Dave, she will receive some excellent surprises and uh, we'll probably find that Scotland goes independent sooner rather than later. That would be marvellous. That'd be a good surprise. Um, Sandy Howden, of course, on his wish list there, just talking complete and utter bunkum. Nice, nice fella, but just wittering a lot of rubbish. Uh, where can I buy a McClue's pie? I am starving, says Dino the Doug from Edinburgh. Dino the Doug, McClue's pie is fantastic. Any reputable bakers say hi to a McClue's pie. I always say, Sean Finlay's watching. Dinky, you do to you, Sean, from me, Scotty McClue, and the rest of the world on the World's Top Talk Show with the World's Top Broadcaster, Scotty McClue, saying dinky do to all of you. Sunday night, of course, nothing gets past me, you see. I'm not just an athlete. I do spot all that. The last bonnet who came to Scotland for five years left an imprint. Hello, Scotty. Hope you're well, buddy, says Sean. Yes, indeed. Uh, was there a football match of the day? Lol, says Ian Walker. Well, I don't know. I, I've heard one or two reports that uh, there was something of a game, Ian, but I think one or two people are dischuffed with the result. Uh, that's all I could tell you. Uh, Tories will take 10 to 11 seats, North East Scotland and Border Plus. 
Oh, yes, what a lot of rubbish. Louis, I've never heard so much nonsense in all my life. Uh, I don't think we're singing from the same hymn sheet, Scotty, says Dave Hemsley. I think we are, Dave. I think you just need to listen to a lot more of me. Catch up in your education, develop your thinking, realise what's involved here, and suddenly, woo, you will wake it up like the princess in the Sleeping Beauty. Uh, Rangers and Celtic, says Paul Wright. Absolutely, Paul, the old firm game. Scotty McClue always likes to get along to an old firm game early, because there's a fair chance of me getting a game then. And uh, I once got caught down at Parkhead, climbing over the fence. The policeman says, what do you think you're doing? I said, climbing over the fence. He went, go back in until the end of the game. So there you are. Uh, the bonnet done it, says Ian Walker. Louis has been reading the telegraph and behaving it. <laughs> now, um, I'm not saying uh, any newspaper in particular, but do be very, very careful, folks, with what they call mainstream media right look at who owns the papers look at them protecting their interests ask yourself if what you're reading is actually news or if it's very 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 angled and in particular watch anything that's anti-scotland anti-independent pro-union just be very careful take a sack of salt around with you and uh, just always have that for these things so be very careful with your judgment do not believe what you hear on the telly the radio the newspapers if you want the truth you watch scotty mcclue did you like that truth you watch scotty mcclue on a sunday night dinky do just for you there's a lot of wisdom beneath the bonnet and you'll always get the truth and you'll get the facts from me and you'll get the balance uh, i'm in turmoil scotty if advertisers say there's new and improved dog food who tastes it? <laughs> well, I would never advocate that you eat the dog food, but actually I've always wished that I had something similar. If I looked like my dog, very, very, very shiny skin, and I could wag my tail. Evening chaps and chapesses. Chaps and chapettes, says William Smith. The pro-independence vote is very unlikely to shrink very much for the foreseeable future, says Rene. The manner in which the British establishment and mainstream media defeated the Yes campaign will, and I'm not going to look at Seymour, you'll have to send that to me because I put one of my big paws and popped Seymour and the whole show went off and we lost it. Right, share time everybody. Can you share, 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 share this video as quickly as possible? Do you want me to sit back a bit so you're not getting my pus right in your face all the time is that any better folks sit back a little bit and then i can talk to you from here if you've just joined us a very warm welcome globally we're broadcasting right around the world we've got australia america canada new zealand the arctic the antarctic russia china japan europe and of course south america and the tierra del fuego so good evening to you good evening washington good evening new york good evening rome paris Berlin, Nairobi, very good evening to you. Johannesburg, good evening to you, of course. And uh, where else have we got? Wellington, good evening. Christchurch, good evening. Sydney, good evening. Canberra, good evening. Perth, West Australia, good evening. Uh, Sandy Holland, a wee shout out to Johnny and Andy and Sandy. Dinky do, says Sandy Holland. A big shout out for you, La. That's what it's all about, I say. Uh, my wife's away to bed, and I'm on a promise. Um, do I follow her or watch Scotty McClue, says George? I think watch me and, um, you know, just keep her, keep her keen, George. I think that's the idea. Um, I think we're watching the fall of France. Nostradamus said Gaul will fall in one of his predictions. <coughs> Ian, Nostradamus was some man, not Nosty as I called him. Good chap. Mm. George Mullen, kill Macomb, not spelt properly. Kill Malcolm, there we are, the Church of Malcolm. That's what I say. Dog food, it will make a change from horse meat, says Mike McGuigan. <laughs> you watch Scotty, George. I'll see to the missus, says Douglas William. <laughs> what a shower you are. A disgrace. Rob Charles, 
perhaps one of the finest broadcasters in the country, and I say that most sincerely, folks, is watching. Now, Rob Charles is a tremendous guy. You'll see him on Facebook Live. He is some practitioner of Facebook Live. Very, very famous broadcaster throughout radio stations in the northwest of England and beyond. So if you ever get the chance to hear Rob Charles, not only is the man a genius on air, he's a very, very nice guy to work with. So there you go. So dinky do to you, Rob Charles, and everybody from the Red Rose days. Tremendous stuff. Charlie FM. Now we tune Scotty. Cheers. Lol, says George Mellon. Uh, true news from Scotty McClure. None of the fake news from him, says Shari B. Quite right. Uh, what would be your policy proposals? Right. Cancel Brexit. That's the first thing. Now, I don't mind admitting I was for the Leave campaign, but it was tactical. I didn't honestly believe it would happen. So there you are. And I also felt that the EU referendum was consultative. I didn't expect them to act on it. So we need to cancel that, I would say. And uh, so that would be one of my policies. I also think that uh, the Liberals could do very well. They, they're talking about cancelling Brexit. So the Liberals might actually just clean up in this election if Mr Corbyn um, doesn't manage to bring all that lot with him. So we'll see what happens. Uh, we stay up all night and watch the election. I usually do, Dave, to be quite honest. I should probably be presenting the election, you know, because I notice one or two of the election presenters are getting on a bit and they should make way for young blood, new blood like Scotty McClue, youngsters like me. Scotty, I'm going to nip along to the garage uh, on Great Western Road at Garton Naval. Are you needing anything? There's ice stuff with yellow labels and marked down prices at the time. Can I get you anything? Brill cream, perhaps? <laughs> Gordon Robertson. Fantastic. You enjoy yourself along there and uh, get yourself a wee reduced chicken and ham. Very nice. Rima Pazit is watching. Um, how can you cancel a democracy? Says Douglas William Bryce. Well, you see, it's, it's really only consultative. When you say a democracy, you know, is it a democracy? Because if you count everything up, yes, the ones that turned out, you got to vote. But remember, you're not talking a full turnout, Douglas William Bryce. You need to be very careful with these things. And then you've got to say, is it in the UK's interests to come out of Europe? Perhaps not. It's certainly not in Scotland's interest, but Scotland, this is where Scotland needs to be independent because Scotland's been trading with uh, the low countries and with Europe for about a thousand years, you see? Whereas a uh, totally different history. I mean, England is really, it's really French, isn't it? To be quite honest with your William the Conqueror and all that mob. Uh, Mr. Farron should take a look uh, at uh, things, says David. And so, yes, I think he's doing that. Uh, uh, yeah, you've been in the garage, says George Mullen. Uh, the democratic deficit will always and has always left the English electorate to decide for Scotland, says Rudy. Said, yes, and the English electorate, electorate are the very last people who should be deciding anything in Scotland because the tectonic plates shift and Scotland is a totally different culture altogether. We're coming from a far different place remember. We're Celtic and Scandinavian in Scotland and the African Rift Valley. So we've got one Scotland many cultures we're needing to repopulate. We need people coming into Scotland. We need to get our strength up. We need to get our oil money into Edinburgh and they split it with Glasgow of course and feed the wains. Red sauce or brown sauce on the bacon sandwich, says William Smith. Ah, you've got me. They're both equally exciting, William. I'm never too sure. When I was in Edinburgh, when we were on Scott FM, they used to have brown sauce on their fish supper. Isn't that interesting? Um, do you think Brexit was a Tory infight? Of course it was, George. It was a cat fight uh, between the Tories. They wanted to see who was, and did you not notice that the ones that had been very vocal about Brexit just ran away when the vote uh, actually happened? They disappeared for the whole weekend, for several days, in fact, if I remember right. Well, that's their loss for not turning out then, sir. They had their chance to keep us, but that option's passed. It's time to accept it and move on. No point in dwelling in what might or might not. Well, no, you see, as I say, because it's a Tory catfight, 
It might be an idea to wait until the Tories have gone before you look at the whole thing and then you talk to Europe sensibly without that kind of nose in the air attitude, we are the best attitude, that sort of idea. I mean, we, we may well be the best at what we do, but you need to drop the attitude, you need to drop the arrogance when you're having meetings. And uh, Europe doesn't want us to go, and Scotland certainly doesn't want to be out of that uh, at the moment. So there we go. Europe will be having their own Brexit when France leaves, then Holland. The jigsaw puzzle can't be made. The English took the corner piece. Yes, the English did. But I'm talking about Scotland here. Can you see that? So we need to, you know, I also wonder if we should have waited and not called the election until we found out what's happening with all the members of Parliament that are on the naughty step at the moment. So there you are. Uh, it was known as chippy sauce, Scotty says, Dina the Doug. That's right, but it was brown, you know. You didn't seem to get tomato sauce. Scotland, we all love you, buddy, says John Smith. Scotty, we all love you. Sorry, I thought you said Scotland, so there we are. Yes, John Smith, thank you. Scotty, we all love you, buddy. You think you do, John Smith? I love you too. It's very, very good of everybody to be with us. Now, share, 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 share. Tell tent, tell tent, tell tent, tell tent about Scotty McClue. Live on Facebook Live for one hour only. I did have a pop-up last week, so look for the midweek pop-up. Look for the um look for the Easter message last week. Look for that, very important. And look for the general election special that we had this week in case some of you missed it. I popped up with a general election special. Keep sending it round. If you see it, share it, share it, share it. I love when I look at my notifications on Facebook and it says 110 people have liked your comment. I would far rather say 110 people have shared your comment and loved your comment. There is a love button there, uh, so you can use that as well. You sound a bit of a Machiavellian, Scotty. You might just make a politician right enough says Rudy Zack. Who knows, Rudy? Uh, you know, but beneath this bonnet beats a, beats a brain, I say. It was a failed career gamble by Mr. Cameron, says Dave Hemsley. Well, not necessarily. I mean, Mr. Cameron may well have quite a career. I don't know what you do after your Prime Minister. I was thinking about it today. I think Parliament could do with um, older head and shoulders at the top. We've had too many young people. We had Mr. Blair, Mr. Cameron, uh, Mr. Uh, Clegg, you know, and they were quite young, young public school chaps, you know, and I think what we're needing to look at is an older, I mean, Churchill at his absolute height, uh, 1944 would be 70. And then he went on until, if I remember right, 1955. He resigned on April the 4th, I think it was, 1955, Winston Churchill resigned. Now, he must have been 80 by that stage. And he was still doing a reasonably good job, you know. He wasn't terribly well. He liked to light refreshment. He smoked quite heavily. But um, he was doing a fair old job uh, at the time as Prime Minister. And, of course, Clem Attlee had been his assistant. Absolutely loved him. Lord Attlee. Uh, but he came in as your socialist man. So there you are. Pop up. Surely at your age, it would just be a semi pop up. Gordon Robertson, thank you, Gordon. Very much appreciated. Trying to lower the tone, not succeeding. My brother's thinking about going to Russia to continue his, uh, his sex change. Any advice for him? Uh, he wants to be known as Leggy. Oh, there you go. Well, hmm, Russia. That's an interesting choice. Uh, Gregor G, hi Scotty, can you say a massive dinky do to the Jackson family, your fans in Washington DC? We're listening. We live close to the White House. Who knows? Maybe Donald will hear you. The Donald, of course, the Donald probably watches. Remember, the Donald is half Scots. He'll be reaping in the pennies from the speaker's circuit, says Dave Hemsley. Yes, of course, we all reap in the pennies from the speaker's circuit. I am on the speaker's circuit. And, uh, you know, reaping the pennies. Uh, Churchill was the first to gas the cud, Scotty. You know that. We know that, Sandy. We know all that sort of stuff. But then Mr. Blair, uh, you know, he was off to war in Iraq. Mr. Bush was off to war in Iraq. 
So the British have very often caused mass uh, suffering and mass deaths by their foreign policy, Sandy. You must remember Palmerston in 1841 was sent in the gunboat, gunboat diplomacy. So there you are. Uh, Churchill was a warmonger, says George Mullen. He was indeed, George. He charged at Omdurman, at the Battle of Omdurman. He was in a cavalry charge. Um, who do you think has been the best politician, says Steve Burroughs. Now, that's a big one, Steve. The best politician. You're covering a huge amount. You see, Alec Douglas Hume was not regarded as the greatest prime minister, but he was a wonderful foreign secretary. And he was dealing with Khrushchev in Russia and uh, Kennedy in the White House in America. So quite a guy, absolute gentleman from the borders. I was thinking, uh, you know, Mrs. May has definitely um, got something running, not for her, because she's not Scottish. And really, I think to be in power in this country, you should be Scottish or have Scottish influence. Look at the greats we've got. Nicola Sturgeon, for a start. Uh, Gordon Brown, I know he wasn't uh, terrific in his premiership because the thing had been wrecked, um, but he's a Scot. Tony Blair, educated in Scotland and I think brought up in Scotland as well, if I remember right. Alec Douglas Hume, tremendous stuff. Uh, so there you are, we had him. Uh, George Younger, you know, so you have all these terrific Scots running ahead, you know. Ramsay MacDonald from Lossiemouth, the first Labour Prime Minister in this country. Uh, right, going way back, Lord Aberdeen, of course, you had him. Uh, so you really need a Scot right at the centre of power because their judgment is not clouded. They, they don't subscribe to the class system. And that's why I get invited to so many high level meetings, get to sit in on board meetings and things like that, because I'm not going to wreck the joint. Do you see what I mean? You can sit there and you can give um, advice and you can warn people in a sensible way without actually saying, do you realise that, uh, you know, this is the moment and I am the one right now and the rest of you are just rubbish. You know, that sort of attitude. No, 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 no. Uh, right, best politician, you as well asking who's got the most faces in Britain. <laughs> more faces than the town clock. Keir Hardy, says David Fairbairn. Yes, he was quite a guy. And um, need to change the tune. It's getting boring with all this political rubbish. Come on, Scotty. You're a brilliant guy. William Wallace was an excellent politician. Right. I didn't realise that a lot of you didn't enjoy politics and enjoy talking them properly rather than just being talked at. We've, all we've heard is the weekend politics. Change the record, says Pauline Duffy Stewart. Right. OK, we'll leave politics. Uh, two last things. Should we scrap Brexit? You know, let's have a quick poll on that. And also, do you think Scotty McClure should stand as a member of Parliament, as an MP? Do you think I would make a good MP or do you think I would not? That's up to yourselves. You tell me, not a problem. Now, if you want to discuss something else, I will be absolutely delighted. You tell me. I would have thought you would have enjoyed a few politics. But uh, not a problem. John McLean, says Ian Walker. Yes. Blair sold the chemicals to Syria. Uh, would this be a war crime as toxic poisoning of people in Syria? Well, as we've said, Michael McGuigan, uh, you know, Churchill gassed the Kurds. So, you know, British foreign policy. It's not a Scottish thing. It's not Scotland's thing. Look at what we did in India and in Africa to the tribes, you know. Work it out for yourself. £5.50 for a burger at the game today, Scotty. That's why we need a hard Brexit, says Douglas William Bryce. Douglas, I think you'll find that your burger did not come via Europe. Your burger was probably a bit of Aberdeen Angus uh, deleted down. And also, it's the fact the game's on. Scotty, I can hear your washing machine in the background. Have you still got a ringer? You'd walk in. Yes, I've got an Acme Thunderer. And I, uh, I ring out, I call. I call the handle on my ringer. So there we go. I was enjoying the politics, says Val Hansen. I'll vote for you, says George McBean. Uh, SNP all the way, Sandy. Wake up, says Shug McGinty. Now, that's not me doing any adverts for SNP. I'm only reading 
what's been put in front of me. So there we are. I'm only following orders. Uh, fantastic. Sean Finlay, what's your favourite bagpipe tunes? Mine's Highland Cathedral or Lone Piper. Da, 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 uh, I think Glen Calla Castle is the one for me. Um, that's a beauty. <coughs> uh, the great Baron Rocks of Aden, another cracker around from the 1850s, I think. Queen Victoria danced with Prince Albert to the Baron Rocks of Aden. Uh, what do you think of Billy Connolly as a comic? I think he's been the best. Job. Billy Connolly is one of the finest comedians ever. Because he really, really, really explored the genre. And he's observational. So he's coming out with a lot of facts. So Billy Connolly, absolutely outstanding. I send him love and blessings. A terrific guy. Funny, funny man. Very, very, very clever. Very, very well connected as well. So there you go. Um, I had hoped to get Billy Connolly's agent. But they only handled... Billy Connolly. So there you are. Uh, squeeze box time. Well, everybody was enjoying the politics till somebody put the, the span on the works. Billy Connolly's an absolute legend, says Douglas William Bryce. He agrees with me. John McDonald says, <coughs> I've just logged on Foz do Igalsa in Brazil. How long have we got left of the show? We've got 25 minutes, just under 25 minutes of the show. And there's you logging on in Brazil. Fantastic. Brazil. Where the nuts come from. Uh, the SNP do not like Billy and Sandy. Out. Sandy, that's nothing to do with it. Sandy, you need to grow up here. You need to widen your thinking. You need to develop that wonderful mind of yours. I'm sure you've got a good brain there, but you're wasting it. Running around saying, is Keir Hardy speaking tonight? Is he coming to the village hall? No, Sandy, no, no. Keir's dead. Keir's away a long, long time ago. Oh, what about R.B. Cunningham Graham? He's become a Scottish nationalist. No, he's away as well. He's away as well, Sandy. Yes, I was, uh, yes, and Mr. Attlee, he's gone too. So Sorry, Sandy, but there we go. And, and, and Mr. Churchill's away as well. So there you go. So uh, SNP, fantastic. They have taken the place of Labour. So they're your new party, Sandy. Jump on the bandwagon, la la. Um, what else have we got? Hello from Carrick Fergus, says William. Ah, oh, Carrick Fergus. What a beautiful tune that is, Carrick Fergus. I know it very well. I know all of the Emerald Isle and uh, tremendous stuff. Politics gives me the bulk. <coughs> I don't want to hear about cheaties signed in 18 Canteen. No, no, nothing signed in 18 Canteen. 1707, 310 years ago, Robert. Scotty, I never mentioned Keir. You did. I know, Sandy, but Keir, you think Keir's probably speaking tonight? You're, you're living in that era, you know? You probably have meetings with the old Republican Brotherhood. Remember them? Fantastic stuff. Here's where you heard it first. Glasgow Airshow, Airport should be renamed Billy Connolly Airport. George. Well, we wondered if Glasgow Airshow, Airport could be the Scotty McClure Airport, you see? Or maybe Prestwick should be Scotty McClure Airport. I definitely think that one of the Scottish airports should have my moniker on it. Scotty, come on, we don't need the royals. The wee princess says she's lonely looking after the kids. Come on, she should be bringing up Wayne's using the food banks and money for the meter. Ian, you're talking complete and utter bunkum. The royals cost us 52 pence a year and they are an absolute bargain. They bring us in billions. I wouldn't like to do that particular job. All the palaces and castles and all the rest of it, most of them belong to us, the state. And um, if you dissipated all the royals' money, we would be without the royals and we'd have no money. So there you go. If you sold off Buckingham Palace, somebody would buy it as a luxury hotel. Where would you invest the money? Property in SW1 in London? <coughs> that would be probably your best route. Uh, Maroy Bay, my wee ma'am lived by John Kerr. There's George Raffin. So there you are. Don't really know what you're talking about. Ken Dodd and Bob Monkhouse are both legend. Bob Monkhouse, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Very, very funny man. I wasn't over mad on his style because, you know, he was so slick with his repetition. I love Ken Dodd as a comedian. 
Um, and I've got so many favourite comedians. You know, Kevin Bridges. There's a great guy. There's a guy very, very funny. Uh, and there's myself, of course, you know, although I've, I've never claimed to, to be funny. Uh, still game is awesome. Funny as, says Sean Finley. Yes, it is. Uh, proud of the two princes talking about mental health, says Andrew Thompson. So am I, Andrew. <coughs> Pardon me. We slip a slop of tea. Ooh. Now, time for another share, folks. Share, 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 share. As soon as this video finishes tonight, get sharing it to everyone. Tell everyone about Scotty McClue. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue live on Facebook Live for one hour each weeknight. Uh, sorry, each Sunday night. So there we are. We're not on each weeknight. Um, Irish and Scottish folk songs, Captain. All the royals and mentals is Ian Walker. Not at all, Ian. You need to get the chip off your shoulder and see the bigger picture. So there you go. Remember, we've always got the stabilizing influence of Her Majesty. Prime Ministers come and go. In fact, I'll tell you, Ian, I had a thought last week. When Theresa May announced the election, I thought they've got this country in a dreadful, dreadful, dreadful mess. And what we're needing to do is perhaps take the, uh, the baton off them, take it away from the politicians and give it back to the monarchy as it was up until 1688. Return the country to absolute monarchy and take away constitutional monarchy until the politicians sort themselves out. So rather than having politicians giving away Britain, actually say, whoa, Britain belongs to Her Majesty the Queen and to the Crown. So there you go. So that's what I was thinking about. And it's the same Scottish independence, fabulous. Absolutely up for that 100% as is virtually every right thinking Scot. But we keep the crown. Very important. The crown and the Bible. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting for a bath. I'm smelly after a hard day's graft. Keep up the good work, big guy. A pleasure as usual, says Sean. You enjoy your bath, Sean. Gordon Sterling, McClure, can you give us a few tunes? The politics is tedious. It's wall to wall, 24-7. Can you invite Ruth Davidson or Annabelle Goldie? Both are drop-dead gorgeous, says Gordon Sterling. Right, Gordon. So there we are. Obviously, your glasses should be ready this week, shouldn't they? You're a royal apologist, McClure. What happened to the McClure, the man of the people? Robert Bain. I will always be a man of the people, as are the monarchy, right? They do nothing but look after the people. And for 52 pence a year, it's not an apologist. They do not need any apology. I can tell you that right now. So there you go. Uh, See what I mean, Scotty, says Sandy. English comedians are funny as a week in the jail. There's very few exceptions. Well, I watch a comedy program on the telly, supposed to be, and it is just not funny. I have never, ever, ever cracked a light. So there you are. Um, I'll tell you who I uh, did come across this week. A chap that just died recently at the age of 90 called Don Rickles. Now, he's not everyone's cup of tea uh, because he insults people. But he was insulting at such a high level. He was um, going to dinners with uh, Ronald Reagan and Frank Sinatra and insulting them. And they were his best pals. So there you are. Quite interesting. They're very, very interesting. Monarchy are very good to themselves at our expense, as Rudy said. Not already. Uh, I wouldn't do their job for, uh, you know, £20 million pounds a year. Um, I really wouldn't, to be quite honest with you. Uh, because uh, um, it's just not, not an easy job. Did you get away anywhere for Easter holidays, Scotty? Yes, I got away to cleaning the hoose. So there you go. <laughs> Fantastic. Scotty, get a move on, would you? I'm waiting for you to finish before I go to the garage. If you don't get your finger out, your yellow label stuff will all be sold out. Well, listen, I'm not in any rush, buddy. I have a good mind to just have a tune in the box. If you're wanting me to hurry up, I'm not going anywhere in a hurry. What have we got for time?
There you are. That'll sort you lot out now. Sometimes insults are meant in good fun, Scotty. I can't wait for the shipping forecast. I've been waiting for the Mull Ferry for hours and it has disappeared. Very, very funny. An American on the pier at Tober Murray. And um, he said, uh, the, the pier guy came up to him and he said, Can I help you at all? And he said, uh, Yeah, I'm just waiting for the 10 NA. And the guy said, I beg your pardon? What are you, what are you talking about? He says, The 10 NA. I'm booked on the 10 NA. He went, there's nothing, nothing around of that. I don't understand what you're talking about. Is it the 10 o'clock? 10, 10 a.m.? No, 10 N.A. He said, can I see your ticket? And I look at it and it said Iona. The boat was called the Iona and he was booked on the Iona. Amazing. We are good on the Muth organ, Scotty. As I said, walking absolutely lost in the fog. Michael McGooden. Um, round tree was the tune, Greg, says Rudy Shack. Yes, it was indeed. Ha ha ha! Says Mark Brennan. Excellent stuff. Now, if you've just joined us from around the world globally, Australia, New Zealand, India, Africa, Canada, America, Madagascar, Tasmania, the Arctic, the Antarctic, Russia, China, Japan, all of Europe, of course, and all of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and all of the Emerald Isle, Ireland itself. I say dinky do to you from me, Scotty McClure, and a very warm welcome. Spread the word about this program. Never, ever, ever miss a second of this program, or you'll miss a moment of Scotty McClure. You miss a moment of Scotty McClure, you miss a moment of life. There you are. You have it straight. You heard it from the horse's mouth. An excellent place to hear, even although the other end feeds the rhubarb. Right, now it's um, just after a quarter to ten, so we've got about ten minutes left. We dumped the politics because I was going, oh, don't talk politics, don't talk politics. I think those of you who say don't talk politics struggle to understand it. You're the crowd that either never go to the polling booth or go down and just scribble on the paper. Uh, so there you go. That's what I say. You're uh, sitting, oh, you're still on about the draw droppers, Scotty. Yes, I spewed a double Mori Harbour, said David Fairbairn. Thank you for that, David. Too much information. Uh, but that certainly um, raised the tone of the show. That Go Radio page has changed its name recently. Is it still happening? I want McClure on the airwaves so I can give you a piece of my mind. Robert Bain, if you give me a piece of your mind, what will you be left with? I say. Uh, George Mullen says, Hi, Jai. The existence of royalty invites subservience. Forelock tugging and bended knee is most certainly not for me, so really sad. No, really. You don't have to do any of that. When you meet the Queen, all you have to do, if you're a Scot, you usually just do like that. That's that's plenty. You let the head fall forward just to the chest. That's, uh, you know, you don't need to actually bow the knee. And that's what all your Scottish officers, if you watch your Scottish officers with their drawn sword, you know, permission to march off, ma'am. Uh, your Majesty's permission to march off, you know, and, and she'll nod and they will bow like that. So there you go. Also, when the private secretary goes into the presence, uh, into uh, talk to Her Majesty about something, he will uh, he will bow at the door, and then he'll probably say sorry to the stub. So there you go. Right, James Michael Harvey's watching. Didn't you do? She's not my queen, says Robert Bean. She's everybody's queen, Robert, and you're very 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 lucky to have her. So a little bit more respect from you, young man, will not go amiss. Say hello to Sandra. She's in Spain. Says George, dinky do, Sandra. I'm just having a, a seize the day. Mm. Now, a wee chat about McClure before we dash. It's all about you and not enough about me. So, uh, just to let you know what's happening, sometimes there's a pop up during the week, guys, um, when we have things like a general election being called. Nicholas Sturgeon should have called a snap indie ref, but why has the general election been called? Mmm. When I first heard it, my little radar, my political radar said to me, this sounds like a back me or sack me. There's been a bit of a, an atmosphere at the cabinet meeting that morning. And, uh, you know, it's been back me or sack me. I'm going out to announce an election. The other one is perhaps we should have left the election until after we'd found out just how many, uh, you know, MPs are going to be fit to serve, shall we say. The government should ban all women from driving. Well, McClure did say years ago that probably they should curfew women drivers so they're on the street and not at rush hour. 
right? They're, they're, they're around, maybe they can go after lunch when everything's quiet on mid-morning, that sort of thing. Scotty, do you remember the Queen part when she found out Scotland rejected its very own independence? Very poor indeed. Rudy, um, that was Mr Cameron's words. I don't think the Queen actually purrs. Queens do not purr. So there we are. Cats purr. And um, the Tories should know all about cats because Brexit is effectively a cat fight within the Conservative Party. And the rest of the country are being used as pawns on the board. That's what I see there. Right, now, um, what was I going to tell you when I got uh, interrupted there? Yes, so I may up. I'm also broadcasting on Periscope. So if you check out Periscope, follow Scotty McClue. Those of you who have Twitter accounts, follow Scotty McClue. Actually go and do it. Don't go, oh, I must, I must do that. Just go and do it. Share everything with Scotty McClue on it because it's in your interest to do so because we're building audience for the program. Then also, um, you'll get me on Google+. Plus. There's a Scotty McClue community. We're building that up from scratch. So get onto that Google+. Plus. Get onto YouTube and put in the Scotty McClue channel. Yes, and uh, Scotty McClue channel on YouTube. And there's a couple of hundred videos there. And if you can subscribe, it doesn't cost you anything. You just click the subscribe button. If I get another 100 or so subscribers, we can also broadcast on that platform as well, on YouTube. Then you really are traveling, guys. Uh, cat fight like the two cats in Downing Street, they just don't get along. UKIP will be the beneficiary should the Tories soften up on Brexit. Uh, Schengen, etc. says, Rudy, don't panic, Rudy. Scotland can take people in. Scotty, did you have a privileged upbringing? I can he see Scotty for the scheme. Ian, I know all about the scheme. I've worked with very, very, very challenged people in my life and looked after them. So there you are. So don't judge a book by its cover, la la. Um, when are you on Periscope? I'm on Periscope. Not right now, but I was on Periscope earlier. So if you go on to Periscope, put in Scotty McClure, you will see... 15 broadcasts number five is almost viral so there you are i've got a blue jumper on and a polka dot tie and uh, the camera is facing the wrong way so it starts with me tapping the screen like this tap 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 nothing happens and then i appear and go aha there you go right uh, me as a woman don't drive because i've had a near-death experience twice from uh, one near reversed over me. Oh my goodness. I'm picking up in my submarine periscope, Captain. Up periscope. I don't drive. I know I'd be terrible, so I've never bothered to learn, says Becky Lenton. No, 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 do learn, Becky. It's just we've got a generalization here. But don't, for goodness sake, let me uh, weaken your confidence. Dive, 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 says Ian Walker. Yes. Das Boot. Uh, I had dust boot is on the other foot here. I can tell you that for nothing. So there you go. Scotty, what are you driving these days? You know what I drive. I've been driving the same vehicle. I've had three of them over the last 21 years. And I've never, never let up. In fact, I've just moved one on because I had 212,000 miles. And it was 19 years old. And I'd had it for 18 uh, and a bit years. So there you are. Uh, the driving tests are all changing. Have you ever done drag? Worn a twin set? No, I don't drive dragsters, actually. Too near the ground for me. Uh, there's no women sticking up for women drivers. Lexus, says Greg Connor. No, it's not a Lexus, Greg. Uh, so it's got a British name. Um, he's driving a gold carriage, says Ian Walker. Stop it, Ian. What kind of car is it, says George Mullen? George, you know it's a proper gentleman's motor car. That's all I'm saying to you. A proper gentleman's motor car. So that's what I drive. Have done for 20 years. A Honda says Greg. No, it's not a Honda. Men should sit driving tests and women should sit next door to them learning how to darn their socks. <laughs> oh, oh, no cares here. A Jaguar says Angie Thompson. Ah, no, Angie. You're getting warm, my dear. You're getting warm. Right. Uh, how we get on here? Now, a word to the wise. 
as soon as we finish this program, if you don't trust the mainstream media, and if you would like to build an independent media, come and fund me. Now, it'll only cost you a couple of quid or a fiver or a tenner or 20 quid, whatever you feel you can give, but go to GoFundMe. Uh, GoFundMe.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue. You'll also see a PayPal me doing the rounds. PayPal me Scotty McClue five, right? That's five quid I'm asking for you. So please do it though. Don't pass me by on the other side. Be a good Samaritan and say, Scotty McClure's been entertaining for 25 years. Therefore, I can afford to give him five quid or two quid or whatever and build it up. There's 325 pounds in the GoFundMe. We're hoping to raise five million and uh, the bar at the moment's half a million. So get your money in there. I can stand everybody laughing at me. I can stand the humiliation because I know in the end we will get there because we always do. So if you can spare two pounds for Scotty McClure, then www.gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue or go to GoFundMe and put in Scotty McClure and up will come the page. Get your, your debit card out and put a couple of quid in. Scotty, on the Scotty Live Show, what did you drive into work in? Ah, no, that was a car that was actually loaned to me. So there we are. That was uh, a Mondeo, I think. So there we go. The video. Yes, you're right. You're right. Who's laughing at McClue? I'll sort them out, says Robert Bain. <laughs> Very good of you, Robert. Guys, we're, we're getting near the end of the show, and I know George panics because he knows I'm going to sing the goodbye song. But what a wonderful, wonderful show it's been. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You haven't used the Skype yet. I'm going to have to train you to Skype in so we can make a phone in because that will be absolutely massive. So there we are. Can you imagine it? A global phone in. Yeah. If you own a radio station or own a television station, grow a pair, phone Scotty McClue and I'll come and do some work for you. Either I can be on the other side, behind the scenes, advising, directing, actors, whatever, all that sort of stuff. Or I can be front of house and pop up for an hour in the evening and build your audience for you. Not a problem. Nostar, Scotty, says Julianne Scott. Nostar to you, Julianne, I say to you. Fantastic. We've enjoyed tonight, says Rudy. Thank you. Uh, tell George you can go upstairs now. I thought it was a Honda. Good night, Scotty. I've only just learned to use the toilet. Never mind the Skype, says Robert. Good work, Scotty. Well done, man. So there we are. I'll give you a clue. The initials for the car was RR. All right. Uh, we'll get a three-minute warning for the song. Yes. I must look that video out, says Greg Connor. Absolutely. Neil Tipping. Ha-ha. Don't give too much away now, Neil Tipping. Neil Tipping was the wizard of the big switchboard in the northwest of England. Five million of a TSA. Huge, huge, wonderful radio station. I think it's uh, sort of just plays, plays music now. Wonderful station. Great phone-in program. Tremendous. And uh, Greg Connor there. Dinky-doo to you. Good one, Scotty. Good night to you. And... Um, a Reliant Robin, says David Fairbairn. Good one, David. Excellent stuff. We like that. So there we go. Right, folks. Facebook Live, Periscope. Uh, follow me on all of these. Twitter, uh, YouTube. Very, very important. LinkedIn. If you're a business person, you want to follow me on LinkedIn, feel free to do that. Spread this program around crazily, randomly during the week. Don't just like stuff, love it and share it. That's what to do with Scotty McClue. Love him and share him, I say. I shall push off the new out of your road, guys. And if you can go fund me, if you can spare a fiver or something like that, that would be fantastic. Lovely being with you. It's big stuff. Great things are coming. There's top level meetings going on all the time. And social media is changing television beyond all recognition. This is where they should have their election. Never mind your MSM. Get on to Scotty McClure on a Sunday night 
on Facebook Live, and I will keep you right. Until we all meet again, have a wonderful, wonderful week. This is Scotty McClure saying dinky doo to you. And ta ra lads, what I shall do now is sing the song. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody, of Wither Zane. Au revoir and a cheerio. I'm just going to do an Apri show on Periscope right now. If you get over there, you might beat me to it. Until next week, Scotty McClure says, Dinky-doo! Scotty McClure has left the building. Ooh.